Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Welcome back to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with me, Carl Fitzpatrick. Now, we've heard the term software as a service, but what about skin as a service? This is the name of the game for Integumen and its subsidiary Labskin. The chief executive of Integumen, Gerard Brandon, joins me on the phone now to tell us about this innovative business. Gerard, Integumen wasn't your first entrepreneurial experience, so perhaps you can tell us about your own career to date. Most of my life I've always actually been looking for a problem to solve with an engineering background. Basically, the kick is actually about fixing stuff and even creating stuff that people didn't actually even believe that they needed. So that has all evolved. I suppose, over the last, the best part of 30-odd years. Now, Gerard, from your experience, what is the secret to building a global business? The problem itself has to be very, very large. That's the basis of a a, a successful business. You're solving a, a major global problem, or at least a societal problem. The second one has got to do with the uniqueness of your of your offering, whether it's actually a product or a service, and and that it actually should be or must be pretty unique. I think the biggest one is actually timing. Timing is actually very critical. Uh, I mean, if you actually consider that Uber wouldn't have existed without the actual financial crisis, when people were looking for a second job or or, or jobs to replace the ones they were kicked out of, and even Airbnb wouldn't have actually been um, successful without the housing crisis, and uh, people needed an extra room to to rent uh, to look after their negative equity, as a lot of people in Ireland actually did at the time. And I think the fourth one then has to be management uh, and the capability to execute. Now, you took over Integumen back in 2018 in what was essentially a reverse takeover deal with Galway-based firm Cellulac. What can you tell us mm-hmm. about this unusual takeover? It wasn't easy. Uh, and and to, to, to some extent, it was a part takeover. We took it over and we undertook five transactions. The last one was actually undertaken uh, in 2015 at a valuation of around about $23 million. So we used uh, a lot of financial engineering, debt, deferred debt, vendor financing mechanisms to, to build it from minus 300000 to a reasonably decent-sized company. Now, that was then to be uh, reverse taken over uh, um, of a listed company, obviously to grow the company at larger but ran into some difficulties, um, mostly because the target company in Tegumen not only had no money, uh, but they had you know, massive amounts of debt. I decided the best way to actually solve this was to go into Integumen, fix it, and then consider what we would actually do with, with Cellulac. One of the most interesting activities for Integumen is skin testing through its subsidiary LabSkin. Perhaps you can explain the rationale behind this particular activity. Okay, this is the actual uncut diamond that existed inside of Integumen. Over time, they'd built up a production of skin of about 30 odd thousand pieces of skin that they'd actually produced with all of the data and testing that had actually been carried out. But it was actually designed by scientists for scientists. Unfortunately, what had been overlooked was the fact that they were selling it for uh, these test kits for £1,500. Um, obviously, it was actually a UK company, so £1,500, uh, into universities and research labs, and, and it was a great piece of technology. But uh, this is where the, uh, the history of, of Ultracell, we'd actually built in Ultracell a distribution channel um, in 43 countries with 50 partners um, and, and uh, the biggest hurdle at the beginning of that was actually getting the product onto the shelf of Boots. Um, boots obviously required sufficient data, uh, verification, validation that actually the product did at the time stop bleeding fast with the actual product we had with, with uh, Ultrasound. And we'd spent the best part of 18 months and over a quarter of a million uh, euros um, testing the product to satisfy the requirements to get the product on, onto boot shelves. And inside of uh, Integumen was lab skin. And lab skin was actually a, a laboratory grown skin that you could actually have any type of bacteria growing on it. In other words, it was designed to host bacteria, fungus, and viruses. And here was a piece of technology that they were selling for £1,500 
and it could actually solve the problem of what I had to spend the best part of a quarter of a million on uh, back in 2003, end of 2002, beginning of 2003, to get it off the boot shelf. And I realized they should be selling this into the marketing department. That's how we actually transformed from selling it for £1,500 to selling it for a service of £50,000. Talk us through the cloning process and the technology which you utilise to clone human skin. The original concept back in 2009 in lab skin was to design specifically the growth of a piece of skin in a laboratory that you could host the similar bacteria, fungus or viruses that are actually on the outer surface of your skin. So (coughs) over time it evolved to the point of where uh, it was possible to test those products, as I said earlier. But recently, um, and this is actually part of the post-acquisition of Rhino Cloud um, last year, we were able to swab the surface of your skin, let's just say the forearm of your skin, take the swab of that, and imposes a skin inside of, uh, the, inside of the, our laboratory in lab skin. So therefore, you now have a duplication of that uh, <clears throat> surface on your skin, which means that we can now test products on your skin in our laboratory without you being in attendance. But if you consider that in, in terms of the value to a large corporation, they would normally, and, and some of these large corporations work with about 10 test products at a time. And these test products, they would spend probably about 500000 each um, to actually do the clinical trials necessary to see which one is the best uh, for, for them. Now, what we're able to do is we're able to eliminate eight of them and give them the top two within a very short period of time. Is skin as a service becoming a phenomenon, Jerry? Well, you know, it, it's funny. I was actually even having a conversation about this uh, last night. Um, what has actually happened was we created a solution to a problem that didn't exist before we created the solution. And (laughs) that's funny because uh, before this, they were very, very happy to continue on their 18-month development program. But since this is actually now a scenario where uh, many of the large, many of the top 10, uh, these will be household names, products that you'd actually see and have in your in your. Uh, home would actually be companies that we're currently working with um, all over the world. And because we've created this solution, everybody seems to want to have access to this at the risk of actually uh, missing out on because the competition is actually using this product. So we've become the market for all of these companies. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Jared Brandon from Integuman, and I would like to thank Jared for taking the time to delve into this fascinating space with us this morning. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.